Super Smash Bros. The year was 1996, right after we wrapped development on Kirby Superstar. The Nintendo 64 era was upon us. Once I'd made sure everything went smoothly following Kirby Superstar's launch, I moved on to some independent 3D study. At the time, I had a silicon graphics machine running soft image to learn modeling, animation, camera design, rendering, and more. I already had a little exposure to CG software from my time working on Superstar, but those were static images and ones made by other artists at that. And so I decided to propose two games for the Nintendo 64. The first was a four-player free-for-all fighting game, what later became Smash Brothers. The other was an RC robot adventure game where you hacked into security cameras to progress. In the end, I went ahead and made prototypes for both. I did the design, graphics, modeling, and animation. Mr. Iwata handled the programming. We had one other person who worked on the audio too. And now, a never-before-seen look at the prototype for what we call Dragon King, the fighting game. Please take a look. There were no special moves, dodgers, or even items yet, but the game's rules were basically the same as Smash Brothers, as you can see. It had smash attacks, mid-air jumps, shields, dashes, and five-direction aerial attacks. A battlefield stage layout too, though you could change that. At the time, we were very limited in how we could configure models, but they still move pretty well, I'd say. Both prototypes, Dragon King and the RC Adventure, were met with high praise from Nintendo. And so, I waited for an opportunity. The truth of the matter was, the rest of the team at my company was already busy working on other games, meaning there was nobody available. Among these games were Mother 3 for the 64DD, and a more snowboarding-like version of Air Ride, unrelated to the GameCube game. We had several other titles in development too, but those were never announced. After all those projects ended up falling through, we needed a finished game as soon as possible. I felt like we were really onto something with the RC Adventure game too, but I could tell it would take two years to develop properly. And so we went ahead with the one we could finish quicker, the four-player fighting game. To backtrack a little bit, let's talk about the original thinking that led to Smash Brothers. It's often called an antithesis to fighting games, a claim I've echoed myself. But that's not a rejection of fighting games. Fighting games are a lot of fun, in fact. This was a genre where push and pull really got a chance to shine cultivated through years of rivalry between competing developers, so it's no wonder these games took the world by storm. But let's talk about combos. To be honest, I didn't think there was any push and pull there. The gameplay revolves around how you string together attacks after the first hit, rendering your opponent's skill level irrelevant. As more fighting games became combo-focused, the less room there was for strategy. If you didn't know the combos or were new to the game, you'd likely end up just staring at the screen while you got beaten up. Instead of inputs alone, determining the outcome, I wondered if we could make a game with more room for interplay and improvisation. That's how the accumulated damage system came to be. Your opponent reacts to hits differently every time. And if you get knocked off screen, you lose no matter how much damage you've taken. I thought I might just be onto something here. One more thing. I came up with the idea for this game in 1996, around when command inputs for fighting games were starting to get extremely complicated. Some of these were really intense. So I opted for simple controls with a stick direction and a button, something players could intuitively pick up. There's also the smash input performed by flicking the analog stick. With just a quick flick, you could unleash a stronger attack or jump. 
I came up with this after thinking about how best to utilize the Nintendo 64's new analog stick. While others were focused on the analog nature of their directional and tilt inputs, I was more interested in the time it took to complete those inputs. Now, when you think of Smash Bros., you can't help but think of its large roster of Nintendo characters. But this wasn't in the original proposal, it's something we negotiated for later. One common struggle found in console-based fighting games is the sudden abundance of potential main characters. Think about The Legend of Zelda. You have one main character, Link, with plenty of side characters and adversaries. From a publicity standpoint, that lets you start from one main character and expand from there. But with fighting games, you might suddenly have 8 or even 12 main characters right out of the gate. For the customer, that's 12 new faces who just showed up out of nowhere. And it's not so easy to make someone care about them. In an arcade setting, you can just sit down and start playing the game. Or even watch someone else play which presents its own solution. At the very least, if you root for someone playing a character, you might start favoring that character yourself. But I didn't want to throw players into a roster full of characters nobody had ever seen and knew we had to come up with an objective solution to this problem. In the end, we convinced Nintendo to let us borrow their most popular characters. The first impression this gave would plague us right to the very end. After Smash Bros. was finally finished, opinion within Nintendo was split. The developers who played games often really loved their time with the game. But the sales team and wholesalers? They flat out rejected the idea of having Nintendo's characters beat each other up. Though that was before they played it. We also struggled to reach people who already had the idea of a traditional fighting game in their head. The strategies were completely different and it was hard to break preconceptions. In order to bridge that gap, I came up with a few solutions, including Smash Bros. Dojo. In the end, the game received positive reactions after release and gradually gained in popularity. So everything turned out all right, or even better than that, I'd say. I'm truly grateful to all of you who stood by us back then. Incidentally, this was my first title to use voice actors for the characters. It's also when we settled on Kirby's official voice. As anyone who's toyed around with the various rules in Smash Bros. knows, the game is very flexible in how it lets you play. You can turn items on and have a chaotic four-player battle on a random stage, or have a white-knuckle one-on-one battle with items turned off. This philosophy of playing what you want, how you want, was to an extent established here in the first Smash title. And that's it for today. Next up in the game concepts category is Super Smash Bros. Melee. Stage clear. 